Hello, good evening and welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Now my friend Chris and I, we're out tonight to try and catch some squid. I say we're out to try and catch some squid, Chris has already caught some squid while I was busy setting up. So I'm out to try and catch some squid, Chris has already caught some. All I'm going to be using is, when I can find them, because I put them down in the dark, right, little tiny, little tiny squid jigs. Come in all sorts of different sizes, shapes, and colours. They're just imitating. You you're gonna say that? Imitating a shrimp. Okay. You go. You got one again. Yeah. And we're fishing tonight alongside of a pier where there is a bit of light. I don't know if you can see it behind me. And Chris is doing a very good job. I'll bring us some squid. Now the trick is. Well, you'll be able to tell us about fighting them. You need to have, you need to have quite a, quite a loose drag in that they can pull line off when they need to because they were, it's not a bite like you get a fish. It's more of a lunge as they swim. You just play them up to the boat and scoop them up with the net. And what you do not do, what you do not do, <laughs> is lift them straight into the boat because they do hold water and they do hold ink. Yeah, if you lift them straight into the boat, all they do is go and squirt a load of ink and water all over the place. I'll tell you what, that's a good one, that one, mate. Try and flick that jig off there, which fair on. Tell you what, he wasn't coming off, was he? <laughs> tell you what, you'd be in trouble if you come across one of them hundred foot ones, wouldn't you? You're not getting right. That is what we're fishing for. Oh. Bless you. That there is what we're fishing for. That's a good size one that. They have got two different sets of tentacles on them. And they've got these long ones, which they fire out. I mean, look how long they are. And grab hold of crabs, shrimps, fish. And then they draw them into all of these ones. Right in the center of there, there is a beak. You don't want to let that get older because it hurts. Yeah. Well done, mate. What we have got is I have put a lamp at the back of the boat so it's shining down on the water. Because they are attracted to light. We'll do our best now to see if we can't get a few more of these. work as a gilly. Well done. Like we've said, once you've first caught them, don't bring them straight into the boat because they will, they will have water and they will have ink still inside of them. They are fascinating creatures. I mean that their skin, you see how it changes colour? It's got chromatophores in its skin that going bright red like that just shows that it's really knocked off. I need to pull my finger out and get amongst it. Right below the boat. Yeah. 
Near the oh, bottom. It's... Near the bottom, are you? Oh, yeah. I've just seen it swim off. Right, on the bottom, yeah. Look, I've just seen it swim off. Could have been a cuttle, that. Yeah, I don't see Frank's on the bottom. One down there. Yeah. Might look a glow stick on one. Do you reckon? Mate, yeah, go for it. You're, you're going ready. All we are doing here is we're fishing. It's an area of clean ground alongside of a pit. The reason why I've chosen in here, mainly in here, is because it's terrible weather at the moment. It's howling the gale of wind, there's loads of stuff. You can even hear it breaking on the other side of the pier. So I've tucked us in here for a bit of shelter, just out of the wind and out of the weather. The lights that you've got along the pier, I've always found that that helps bring the squid in. So that was another reason why I've chosen this ground. Other than that, there's nothing really to see. The seabed is nothing. There's nothing down there but sand. And all we're doing is just jigging those loads. Chris has cast it out maybe 20 yards from the boat, yeah? Yeah, that. And then just bounced it back along near the seabed. And he's just fishing a tandem rig, which is just like this one here. It's just two squid jigs on like a two up flapper rig. Now they don't have hooks on them, they just have backward facing spikes. So when the squids get hold of them, just don't leave any slack. And the bite you get off, like I said, it's not really a bite, it's just a lunge. Just gently play them up to the boat. We were just talking there about the size of them. They are a good size of squid. I mean, the smallest ones that I've caught before have been like that big, and the biggest ones have been like about 30 to 40 centimetres. Yeah, you do get some really big ones. Smithy had one that was about four pounds, didn't they? Yeah, really nice one. Right in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say that again. Yeah, there was a bit of desperation going on there because I was like, oh no, I've got one quick. Yeah, and then getting it in the net when I pulled it up. I don't know if you saw that, but it squirted Chris right in the face. Yeah, it's up his mates are down there. And that is how the jigs hold on. They do that there, you can see the bit in the middle there where its beak is. Now they do flap themselves along with these with these mantles here, but the place underneath there it jets water out, that's how they propel themselves through the water. <laughs> sorry for that. I, haven't, I haven't even got a dry towel for you, sorry mate. Here's one of the squid that we've just caught, it's still alive, you can see how, you can see his colours rippling. Chris is just going to show you how to dispatch him really quickly. I know I am, just at the back of the head here. See how his colour changed instantly? All you do is it's just a quick knock like that, right where this bit of bone comes between the eyes. And look here, he's dead, it's gone. That was how quick it was. I'll show you once more with this one. Go on, mate. See? Just like that. No, you don't. Right. What is it? Oh, God. <laughs> Come along. I'm all excited. You piece of sugar, Kelp. <laughs> Not a squid.
I'm going to really quickly run through just exactly how I rig my jigs. Now, the jigs that I was using last night, and I use most often, are these Sidewinder Squidder jigs. And they're 130 mil, and they're three and a half gram. Yeah, they're three and a half gram. You can use one or two different ways. If you're going to fish a single lure, like on a light spinning rod, you need a bigger lure. Just because you can't cast the little tiny ones. You get little ones that are about 70 mil and weigh a gram. Little tiny squid jigs. Nice. I've got no extra weight on, whereas you can see these have got a little bit of extra lead on there. Yeah, if you're going to fish a couple of them in tandem with a lead on the bottom, you don't need the weight of the lure. But if you're going to be casting a single lure, you need a bigger, heavier one. So yeah, that's it's just as it goes. These ones, when you're fishing them just a single lure, it's really simple. All you do is you just have a swivel on the end and you just clip them straight up because on the ends of these, they do have like a little tiny eye. So you just link it straight on, either snap it on with a swivel. Now the jigs are, they're dead simple. Link, weight, spikes. Now these are wickedly sharp, <laughs> wickedly sharp. They don't have any hooks on, like you think of like a treble hook or a normal hook where it's got a point and a barb. These are just backward facing spikes. So it relies on the squid getting hold of it and pulling that way and you pulling this way. So you keep the squid on the spikes. The tandem rigs, so simple, just like a two up flapper rig. I was just using 40 pound mono. Now in one end, the, the end that goes to your, <laughs> the end that goes to your line, I do like to put a swivel. On the other end, on the bottom end, on the end that goes to the lead, you can just put a large loop. So you can just link on and link off leads depending on however you're gonna go. If you're fishing in deeper water, go up to six ounce, go up to eight ounce depending on tide. If you're only fishing in 10 meters of water, you only need a couple of ounces. I like to use uni knots. They're, they're neat, they're tidy, and they're strong. If I wanna make a tandem rig, I'll give it, yeah, give it six feet. Now, I've shown this knot a few times before. It's just called a blood loop. And all you do is you, I like my snoods to be quite long so that the squid can move around. Make a loop and just twist the line over itself. So you end up with like that. Then you pass this part through that part. It is, it is important to lubricate the knot before you tighten it down. Because as the knot tightens up and it gets tighter and tighter, it creates friction. Friction creates heat and the heat damages mono. So by lubricating it with some saliva or whatever else you want to use, it makes the knot stronger because it doesn't weaken itself. There you have one of your hook lengths. Go down to another, another stretch. Same again, make a loop and just twist the line over itself. Now when you've created an eye, push the rest of the loop through. You see how I'm, I'm tightening it down? <laughs> you see how I'm tightening it down? I've just slid it down. It's not fully tight. Lubricate the knot. I'm pulling in three directions. This way, this way, and this way. Like that, look, watch. There. There's your other loop. And on the bottom, you can just make a big double overhand loop knot. So through once, through twice. The reason why you go through twice is because if you only go through once, it can slip. Lubricate again, pull tight. And take your tag ends off. Now for these loops, the reason why I use loops is because it's an interchangeable rig now. All you do is you take the end of your hook length loop, pass it through the eye on the end of your squid jig. Like that. Then pass the jig through the loop and it tightens down. Just like that. 
and take without spiking yourself. Because take your other one out, connect it to your other hook length in exactly the same way. You can use the smaller jigs for this. You can use the smaller lures for this because there is going to be a lead on the bottom of the rig. I haven't actually got any little ones left. I've left them on the boat. If you are fishing in deeper water, you can even add like a locked in lead, a fish locker locked in lead or a bullet lead ahead of the lure. So you give it that little bit extra casting weight or if you're fishing in deep water and it's got a lot of current. Now that is, there is your tandem rig. I like them when I'm fishing for squid for them to have a bit of a long hook length. So there's something for this to move about. Can't, can't get back far enough. Well, there you go. That's the rig. That end connects to your to your line, to your swivel, to your leader. And this end, just let me grab a lead. Right. The other end, I'm going to end up with one of these jigs stuck in me, I know it. The other end that you've created a loop, take your lead. The same way you put the jigs on, you just need to go through and then pull the lead through the loop. Right, and it's connected. The beauty about this, and it's not tied or anything, if you want to change it to lighter or heavier, all you do is you just push the line through, slide it off, put your different lead on, go through the eye, and then through again. There you go. That's it. That's how simple it is. Get in that net. You're in. You're in as well, are you? Have we got two nets? Oh, I And Chris is in on the other side of the boat. <laughs> that one there is an absolute beauty. What size is that one? Yep, all we're doing is exactly what we're doing by the pier. We're just drifting down alongside of a, a bit of structure with some light on it. Just fishing them jigs down near the bottom. And the lunging fight, you just play them up easily, scoop them up in the net, hold them over the side until the jets and all the water and all the rink. This is why you keep them over the side. You see all the ink when it's spitting out? Get that all over your boat and it will not come off. That's it, that's your lot. Everything from being that big up to being that big. That was around about 40 to 45 centimeters long. Now, as I said, when you can fish in deep water, fishing in deeper water, you can use a heavier rod. You can do it like a boat rod, a 12 to 20 is perfect. And like a, a slush 30 or something that's a 15 size, they're not massively, well, unless you're going to be catching like the huge humbles. They're not a massively strong fighting fish. You've just got to play them out because they just lunge. You just need to keep them on these spikes. So you just gently pay away with a light drag. The fishing with a single lure or the fishing that we were doing last night where we were fishing maybe 20 to 30 yards from the boat. 
ammo and fishing in maybe uh, between 10 and 15 meters of water, I was just using a 30 gram spinning rod and a 4,000 size spinning reel. That was perfect. Now, the strength of the braid and the line on there, it's not really important. It just, you match that to the size of the reel. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. And considering that the weather at the moment is absolutely atrocious, finding a little bit of sheltered fishing like that was great. Uh, the squid that we got last night, we did get 10 squid. We shared them out between us. I'm gonna freeze some up. The squid that we caught on the boat. Now, it's my understanding that there is no real wrong way to freeze squid. All I've done is I've sealed them up inside of just Ziploc bags and forced all of the air out so that they're tight inside the bags. The reason why you do that is because if there's any pockets of air, like there is a little tiny bit of one there near that eye, it will get freezer burn. So seal them all up in bags and I'm gonna put them in the freezer. And the rest of them, we're going to take round to gyms. So you're probably going to see a catch and cook squid session now. I hope you enjoyed joining us. All the very best. See you later.